Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So my friends at yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, we're going to do the crochet mix bag. This is a tapestry concept, and what I'm going to do to make it easier is to divide up this tutorial by the sections of the bag. So today is video number one, as we're going to concentrate on the center of the bag right at the very base. So we're gonna begin that, and then once we get that established, then the rest of the rounds will fall into place, and we'll do each section piece by piece in order to work our way up. This is going to use Red Heart Super Saver Ogo. The advantage of it, you see how many colors there are? There are technically only three balls. You have a main color of the black, which I'll be using soft navy, and then I'll be using a rainbow and also jewel tone in order to do it. So when you look at your yarn, you're going to see that it's in Ogo format. So you're just gonna separate the color out and we're gonna be doing that and then just use each color. So there's a total color count of 11 in order to make this work. So we're gonna need some stitch markers today. You'll need a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook. Just for tutorial sake, I'm gonna be using a five millimeter size H so that this can be a little bit tighter for me. And I'm just gonna be working my way through the pattern as we begin. And you're going to notice is that the tapestry crochet diagram is on page number three, but we're not gonna concentrate on that today. We're gonna to concentrate on the very base of the bag and get ourselves established. And next time you see me, we'll then do the next part that you'll see and we'll work our way up through that way. So without further ado, let's get started right now. So the main color is going to be black, but I want soft navy for mine. So you just gotta close the window and just release the yarn from the box and just recycle your box when you're ready and you're gonna pull it. The reason why they want the box is that it sits flat on the shelf so that it has demonstration purposes for the retailer, but also they can peg it if they want to. So you're gonna pull this back and you're going to notice is that when you release the packaging and you toss this into the recycle bin, that it's been secured through a plastic wrap so that people don't unwrap it at the store. You're going to cut that and just remove that out. And you can decide what you want to do. This is the yarn here, so it's you don't have to dig in for it, or you can use the back end of this and have it go in that way. You decide which way you wanna go, and let's grab our crochet hook and let's begin. So we're now going to begin at the base of the bag. I know it's kind of blurry here, but we're gonna work our way through and then we're gonna just work our way through the section and then we'll get to the main body later. So we're gonna do up to uh, round number seven today as we begin the base of the bag. As you begin today, make sure that you make two stitch markers. You can also use plastic components that you may find at the store if you wish. I always find I never lose <laughs> spare yarn. And we're gonna use those to indicate the edges of the bag to make it easier to count. To begin, we're gonna create a slip knot, move these aside, and we'll do a chain of 39. So just insert your hook into there. Remember that never counts as one, and we want to chain 39. So one, two, three, four, five, go all the way to 39, and meet me back here in just a moment. Okay, now that we're all the way here, we wanna go second chain from the hook. I know it's harder to see with this color, but just bear with it. And second chain from the hook, and you need to place in two single crochets into that spot. The first one that you just placed is technically the very middle of the edge of the bag. And what I need you to do is continue along the back hump of the chain all the way down to the other side and I'll meet you at the very last stitch where we'll turn around and we'll come around the underside of this in just a moment. So I have this the last stitch to go before the edge. I want to show you a tip. You're gonna put three single crochets in that one. So one, two, and three. And here's my tip for you. I want you at this point is to place in a stitch marker in the second one of the grouping of three. This will represent the very edge of your bag. Continuing to turn this upside down then, you wanna work on the underside of the chain and you're going to start right here where my thumb is moving. Place down the straggler so that you can trap it and you are just going to single crochet yourself all the way back across this and I'll meet you on the second last stitch before the end of the chain to show you how to finish. When you're coming all the way across, you're gonna go right to the very last stitch that you have. Now, when you started, remember that you put two single crochets into the very first one here. So your very last one is gonna be one single crochet in that same stitch, which gives you the three single crochets on the edge that you needed. And then you're going to slip stitch then to the next one. This bag, in order to keep the sides equal, you have to turn your work and go back now in the opposite direction, okay? So you can't just keep going around and around. You have to turn at the end and we'll, we'll be working on the, the wrong side for just this moment. So let's begin 
round number two. So they're asking us to place stitch markers on the corners of what we're gonna do at the bottom of the bag. So I've already put one stitch marker over here, but we're gonna be moving it when we get there. So to do this, you're gonna just chain up one and you'll place one single crochet into the first stitch. Then in the next one, it's considered a corner. So the corner will be three single crochets into the same stitch. So one, two, and three. And they're asking us to put in the stitch marker on the second one of the grouping of three. Now, because I had you place in the stitch marker on the opposite side, all we just need to do now is just apply one single crochet until we get to the stitch before you place that stitch marker in. So that's where I'm gonna meet you in just a moment. So single crochet over to the stitch before you hit the stitch marker on the opposite side. So I'm coming close to the corner and we're making a new corner on this one. So we're gonna to come to the stitch right before the stitch marker. Okay, so it's right here. In this stitch, we wanna place in three single crochets. So we're gonna say one, two, and three. And watch what I do. I'm going to move the stitch marker over to the middle one of that grouping of three. This is your new corner for this side. So just pull it through and you can leave it in the center piece here. Then you are going to single crochet the next one where that is coming out of. And then in the next stitch after this is the new corner. So there's gonna be three single crochets in there. So one, two, and three. And you need to place the stitch marker in the second one of the grouping of three for there too. And this will show you every time you're hitting a corner where the corner is, so you don't have to manically count. So the corner is going to be here and here. Now we're gonna continue along and we're just gonna go through the opposite side. You can count it if you wish, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some tips. So let's get ourselves uh, close to the edge of this and I will like it to, close to the end and I will meet you there in just a moment because we have to create one more corner before we finish this round. So I'm coming up all the way closer to the end and the last stitch before we hit the corner is going to be three single crochets in there. So we're gonna say one, two, and three. And so I wanna put a stitch marker in the second one of that grouping of three as well, and that will indicate the corner. So I'm just using the same stitch marker just going across. And we're out of stitches at this point. You're done. So in order for us to finish though, we have to slip stitch to the beginning one and turn our work and then begin rows number three, four, five, and six. Now we just turned our work. Now rows number three, four, five, and six are all the same. And what we need to do is that every time you hit a stitch marker, there's going to be three single crochets into that. And you need to move that stitch marker to the second one of the grouping of three so that you don't have to manically count. So you're gonna chain up one and you'll apply one single crochet into the first. And I wouldn't say that you need to count just look for these stitch markers because you place them in. So there's a stitch marker here, so place in three single crochets. And that second one of the three, move the stitch marker into that position so you can find it next time. Oops, I have to come from the back. Okay, and so then you'll see it next time. And then you just single crochet yourself until you hit the next stitch markers over here. And you'll put three into there, mark the middle one, three into here and then mark the middle one and just keep on going around. And so you'll slip stitch uh, when you get back around, you'll turn your work and then do rows number four, five, and six. So please do three, four, five, and six on your own and I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm currently at the end of row number six and I should have 118 stitches. If you don't have 118, maybe you have 117, you can just, before you finish off, you can just put in like two stitches into the same stitch in order to get yourself up. And if you have too many, then you could just do a two together single crochet somewhere. And if you have more than that, you can just equally space that. What we need to do in round number seven is to get ourselves to 120 stitches. 120 is the magic number. This stitching repeat is in multiples of 60. So 60 times two equals 120. So whatever happens in the next round, we should have just 120 stitches. So I've already turned my work. You can now remove your stitch markers out. 
that doesn't matter. And our goal is because we have 118 stitches now, we only have to get two more stitches in order to get to 120. So what they're asking us to do is to get started with this and we're going to put in two single crochet uh, in the front loop only. And what we're doing is we're creating a bend in the fabric. So to do that, you're going to chain up one and do two single crochets in the front loop only, okay? So if there's always two loops that equal one stitch, the loop that is closest to you is the front loop. I know this yard is hard to see. Do you see how I just did that here on the edge? What you can do, it says to count uh, 58 single crochets. That'll take you approximately to the here, the middle. I wouldn't bother to count. I would just say in the middle here, just eye it up, put two single crochets in the front loop only, and then just continue to single crochet front loop the remaining. So that's what I would do in single crochet front loop, all the remaining ones that you get there. Make sure that you do end up with 120. It just makes sense. If you got like 117 or something, just put in two into uh, the same stitch in order to have the balance. That's what I would do. And I will see you at the end of this round. So just make sure halfway around, you put in your two single crochets in the front loop only to get yourself up to 120. So I've now just completed up to round number seven and we're gonna start the main body in the next video and we're gonna have this done. Make sure that you do have 120, I've already verified that. We're gonna be changing our yarn uh, in the next video and we're going to begin that. What I'll do is I'll put a playlist together, I'll put it in the video description and every time a new video is added for this series, I'll add it to that playlist for your convenience. Without further ado, we'll see you again next time and we hope you have a great day, bye-bye.